Ambush at Corellia is the first book in the Corellian trilogy that was written by Roger McBride Allen and was released in 1995. It follows Han Solo and his family as they journey to his home planet of Corellia, which is about to erupt into civil war, all while Luke and Han go on an adventure to get Lando married. Guys, I'm excited to finally talk about this book in particular because of all the Star Wars books, I really don't hear anybody talking about this one in particular and this trilogy as a whole. So it was nice going into a Star Wars book with no expectations and I left reading it rather surprised. What really got me excited very early on reading this book was focusing a lot of time on the Solo children, Jaina and Jason, as well as Anakin Solo, because the last time we saw them in the Crystal Star, they were very, very young and just didn't feel like fully realized characters. But here we get their different personalities, we see how they work together as a team, and it's just really great. In fact, those first couple of chapters really build this family dynamic that I think really helps you throughout the entirety of the book in understanding who these characters are and how they function in the Star Wars universe. I love their relationship with their parents, with their uncle Luke, and their relationships with each other. And it's just so endearing. When it came to eventually reading these Star Wars Legends books, I was excited to finally get into the stuff with um, Han Solo and Leia's children because I had heard so much about it. And this really gave me what I wanted. I love that very early on we just get a nice dinner scene between all of them. And it was just really heartwarming. And in fact, I would say the first act of this book is so, so good. I love the stuff with the family dynamic. I love the mystery that is involved here with um, the civil war that is going to begin on Corellia as Han and them are journeying there. And then also, I love this great little moment between Luke and Mon Mothma as she tries to explain to him that, you know, he's been, you know, so focused on being a Jedi Knight that he really hasn't been focusing on other things that he could excel at, such as, like, with his sister, how he really wants her to continue her Jedi training, but she's also getting involved with politics and everything. And Mom Mothma kind of tells him that, you know, like, we need not just a Jedi Knight, but we need a Jedi leader. We need somebody that can have the best of both worlds and that he needs to kind of broaden his horizons a little bit. And it's a really great moment between the two and really my favorite scene in the entire book. Then after that, uh, I think the book kind of loses its way for a little bit until we get to the climax with um, the reveal of Han Solo's evil cousin, Thraken Sal Solo. Um, uh, this was actually a really great reveal at the end of the book uh, that I actually didn't see coming at all. And it was really cool seeing that Han Solo's cousin is actually the leader of this rebellion that's going on in Corellia as uh, they're trying to separate themselves from the New Republic. And it makes me excited and very interested to see where the rest of this trilogy goes after this. But that is all the good stuff I have to say about the book. Now, the other stuff in the middle is kind of hit or miss for me. Um, some stuff is really good. Some stuff is like, you just kind of shake your head at it. Um, it's not bad, but it's just really weird. I will say that the book slows down a lot in this second act, and there is really not that much going on. Um, most of the second act is Han Solo and his family traveling 
to Corellia. They don't get to Corellia until like the middle of the book. And while that's going on, we go to Lando and Luke's little side quest that they go on where uh, Lando is trying to get married to a bunch of people uh, to get a lot of money to do some, you know, stuff with. And it is really goofy. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say it's bad because it's still entertaining to read, but it just feels so out of character for Lando. Like, this just doesn't feel like the natural continuation of Lando's character. It kind of makes him kind of unlikable. But nonetheless, it is entertaining, especially when he gets involved with almost marrying this life witch that is going to, like, suck his life force out of him in a couple of years. Like, that stuff is goofy and one of the hallmarks of Legends, which has a lot of goofy stuff in it. It's not the worst thing ever, but it was definitely bizarre, and it makes this book stand out like a sore thumb when it comes to that, because the most entertaining stuff is not the main plot, but the side mission. But Overall, I think this is a pretty solid book. It has a great first act, and I wish that it had kept with that tone, with that first act, because this could have easily been one of my favorite Star Wars Legends books. However, it does kind of fall flat in the second half, but it does finally... Um, catch its footing near the very end with the third act and the villain reveal, which gets me excited for the next book. So anyway, guys, with all that said, I'm going to give Ambush at Corellia a 7 out of 10. Well, guys, I want to thank you for watching this review. I hope you enjoyed it. Check back pretty soon. I'm going to be doing some more Star Wars reviews. There's also going to be some more movie reviews coming out soon, so look forward to that. And as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, and stay positive.